thanks once again for coming to Novi Sad, Brent, and giving this great lecture. Uh, let me now introduce you to Ogden Todic. Uh, Ogden is originally from Novi Sad, has been living in Silicon Valley for 15 years now. He worked at startups, started his own companies, uh, recently has been helping Stanford Technology Ventures program with their online services for entrepreneurship education. Ognjen, I must say, helped immensely with the organization of this conference, with the program, and played a really a key role in putting the program together and our guests here today. He will also join me as a moderator of this conference, not only now, but later on during the program. And I will let him explain what we are going to do next. Ognjen. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm glad to see you um, here, and um, I think the, the theme of this year's conference is, is very interesting and um, I'm very uh, pleased to be here and to see um, so many of you uh, being interested in this topic. Um, you know, Brent mentioned that big changes are easier to do. Um, I'm going to kind of <laughs> take uh, on his words and, and we're going to do something that's quite different now. Um, so uh, we're going to do a non-conference session and I'm just wondering how many of you have actually participated before in a non-conference? Okay, so very, very few people. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what non-conference is and then, and then I'll, I'll explain in more detail what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do that. Uh, so unlike regular conferences, which are very structured, there's a, you know, a set of topics that are being discussed, there are experts that come in and talk about th those topics, there, there are sessions at the conference, Unconferences is, is, or at least it may appear to be, a lot less structured. Um, so the participants of the unconference are the ones, and that, that's you, um, are the ones who are going to define the questions and then topics. Uh, and so all of us together, we're going to do that, and then we're going to discuss those topics. And you know, the theme of this conference uh, is uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. So. Um, the idea is to come up with questions and topics um, related to innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so when I was thinking about how to explain to you what conference and unconference is, it, it occurred to me that actually there's this kind of interesting similarity between conference and unconference and then big companies and small companies or st startups. You know, big companies are typically uh, very process oriented, very structured. Um, there is, there's the different types of silos and, and kind of not the flow of information is limited and that in, in a lot of big companies um, maybe Apple is not a good example but majority of big companies actually have problems because of that with innovation uh, whereas in small companies and startups things may seem chaotic but, and there's not much structure uh, but um, quite often uh, these, um, these kinds of environments actually um, entice uh, creativity and innovation and uh, new things get built quickly. Um, so that's, that's what I'm hoping we're going to do here. You know, we're going to have this um, unconference session and uh, it's really what, what's important is that you um, take the role and participate. Uh, try not to be just a passive observer. Try to actively participate in, in what we're going to do. Um, the way we're going to do this is we'll take um, a few minutes initially to come up with uh, topics and questions. So we'll pass out post-it notes. You can write any question that's related to innovation and entrepreneurship uh, and bring it up here. And um, then we'll try to cluster those questions and group them. And we'll define several themes. Uh, and each theme will have its own location in this room. So you'll notice flip charts around the room. Um, each one is going to be dedicated to a specific theme. Um, and we'll split them into groups. You can, you can participate in any group. So, you know, there's a, there's a way I heard somebody explain this. You can be a, a bumblebee and just sit in one group and spend all your time in that group. Or you can be a butterfly, you can hop around and visit different groups. Again, the most important thing is to actually actively participate. Um, each group will have a facilitator, so they'll take notes on the flip charts. 
And then um, we'll take about 45 minutes to that, for that discussion. Towards the end, the facilitator will summarize the findings. And then either facilitator or volunteer from the group will present those findings in about two to three minutes to the whole group. So we'll get back to our seats, and one person from the group will come up here with a flip chart with some notes, summarized notes, and they'll present uh, what the group came up with. Um, do you have any questions about what we're going to do? Okay. Looks like it's either everybody understands everything or nobody understands nothing. <laughs> um, so before we do that, I want to kind of um, uh, get us in the right mindset um, for, for, the, for, that, um, for the next step. And um, Milan kind of um, um, already started this with having you introduce yourself to each other. So this is going to be a little bit unusual, but just bear with me. We're just going to take us five, ten minutes. Just um, relax and um, let's, let's do this thing together. So we're going to play a little game. Uh, I'm going to ask all of you to get up, stand up, and find a, find a partner next to you. Um, ideally, somebody you don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Just introduce, you already introduced yourself to the person next to you. Uh, maybe reintroduce yourself. Um, where's Mil Milan? I'm going to need your help now. Um, and you can actually go on the side also. You can move the chairs. We're going to be moving around a lot in the next five minutes. So d don't um, hesitate to move the chairs, make room. This, is, this looks structured right now. We want to make it unstructured. You can do whatever you want. Um, the game, so face your partner. The, there's not many people from the US. We're going to play a game that in the US it's called paper, rock, scissors. We're going to play a Serbian version of this game. It's called Come and fuck odd, and, odd, and, <laughs> odd and even. So here's, here's, here's how you play the game. You and your partner figure out one of you calls odd, one of you calls even. You face each other. You put your hands behind you. And on the count of three, you come up with a number and so does your partner. You add up those numbers. If it's an even number and you call the even, you're the one who win, wins. If it's an odd number, it's your partner who wins. So very simple. Now the game doesn't stop there. The winner goes around and finds another winner and plays against that person. The person who lost gets behind the winner and shouts their name. <laughs> OK? So Milan and I will just demonstrate this quickly, how, how this would work. So you call odd or even? Even. OK. So one, two, three. OK? So Milan won. I have two. He had zero. OK? So we go around now, and I yell, Milan, Milan, <laughs> Milan, <laughs> Milan. OK? And I find a new winner. He finds a new winner. At the end, we're going to have a single winner of the whole room. OK? They go be loser, loser. The person who lost, it's not a loser. The person who lost goes behind the winner and yells the name of the winner. And we just keep going. So you, know, you have two, two, two winners play. Then three people will get behind the, the winner. So at the end, we'll have two groups, two big snakes going around yelling names, and then one person going after the winner and yelling their name. OK? Are you ready? Let's do it. Come on. Find a partner. Play the game. I want to hear some names being yelled. OK, okay so we have a first question. Any more questions? Thank you. What is more important for a startup, the idea or the team? When do I need to reinvent myself? <laughs> when do I need to reinvent myself? 
Uh, I don't know. Marketing, is good product and service enough? How efficient are startup events? We can answer that at the end. Try to. What are the best ways to generate innovative ideas? How to identify good idea? Okay. Looks like we have a theme. Other questions? Okay, looks like we have a few more people writing the questions. Entrepreneurship versus management as a discipline. Entrepreneurship versus management as a discipline. Okay. Is anybody else uh, writing a question? Or oh, here's another one. Finding balance between going wide and going deep. Okay. Okay, looks like a few more people are. Oh, you have one? Oh, by the way, if, if you don't have to ask questions. Also, if there's a topic that you are expert in and you feel you can talk about it, put that on a paper. How to get funding. Oh, how to create a startup ecosystem. That was another one. How to be sure my idea is unique? Okay, so there's there's a few questions definitely about ideas. Another one? Internet sales, okay, whatever. Sales on internet, okay. So maybe that goes here with marketing. Another one? Thank you. How can you create innovative atmosphere in whole company? Okay, that goes here. Thank you. How do you seek for support when you have a good idea? How to recognize good idea topic startup survival guide. Okay. So we definitely have a set of questions about the ideas. Um, yeah, sure. Our desktop computer is dead. Um, so. So the first theme is going to be around ideas, how to generate ideas, how to recognize what's the good idea, what to do when you have an idea. We're going to be in that left corner. Um, friend, do you want to take that one? The one sure. about generating ideas? So generating okay. ideas? Yeah, there's, there's like five or six questions about ideas Do we take the questions? Do we take the yeah, yeah, they're already over there. Okay. 
So in the left corner, whoever wants to participate in, in this theme, just go there. Uh, Brent will uh, facilitate that session. Um, the other one is more about what is more important for a startup, the idea or the team, how to seek support for when you have a, an idea, and entrepreneurship versus management as a discipline. Um, Sharko? Do you want to take what you do? One is more. One is more people just have a good idea. Okay. So here's, a, here's a, another topic. Um, Jacques will take it. Um, and the questions in that uh, theme are what is it more important for a startup, the idea or the team? How to seek for support when you have a good idea and entrepreneurship versus management as a discipline? I think they're loosely related. So that's going to be over there in the second. Um, in the middle of that uh, area. Um, so another one is around kind of the environment, how to create startup ecosystem, how efficient are startup events, and startup survival guide. Let's leave that on the side. Maybe I'll take this one. And then. This is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's brand. OK, well, you can take it to the first one. Um, sales on internet marketing is good product services enough. Rob, you want to take this? Actually, w w which one do you prefer? This one is around sales and marketing, and this is more like topic startup survival guide and um, I would take startup this events. I can help you with this yeah. also. I think this one's okay. Um, Um, sales and internet marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have we have four themes, and there there are three questions that are kind of uh, um, well, two I should say that we can talk about separately. Um, so ideas with Brand over there, Jarko, what was yours? Beyond the ideas. Beyond the ideas. Okay, great. Um, we have Dan over there in that corner, internet sales, marketing, and then Rolf is more about the environment, um, startup for successful startups, um, and things like that. So join any group. I don't want to see anybody sitting here. If you are not interested, that's fine, but you should really be talking and letting your moder the facilitator of the group think you, you, your thoughts about uh, these topics. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicola from Nish, South Serbia. We were talking here with Brent about making new ideas. Here are our conclusions. So good ideas and innovations are always unexpected. You can't force people to create new ideas, but you can make creative atmosphere in your company uh, and to, to, to make new ideas more often to, to appear. Uh, how to make that kind of atmosphere? Uh, it's most important for people feel free. Maybe informal meetings, restaurants with wine are one solution. Good ideas don't have to be always unique. Sometimes it's finding a way to, to do something better that's uh, exist is a good idea and there is a, you, uh, you, you always have to find balance when choosing idea between selecting uh, between narrow niches and broad approach. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like sales and marketing team is, is forcing their way here. <laughs> they have 
with marketing. Dan, you take over. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, there was uh, quite some people um, in my group. Uh, we had we had three questions. Uh, marketing, uh, in the sense of is good product service good enough? Uh, sales on internet and sustainability and information systems. And we were quite impolite to uh, rephrase this into sustainability and innovation because we couldn't really find connection. So I apologize to the person who uh, put this question here. So, um, marketing. Connection to innovation, it's very obvious, I think. Uh, product service is certainly not enough, so we don't want to have uh, only engineers come up with ideas and solutions and just throw them into the market because we believe that we can we can build nice products around that using the help of creative people like designers, like uh, I don't know, psychologists. And the whole thing is that uh, um, product and services have been more complex today, and the expectations of the market, both consumers and industry, are very high and getting very, very high. Feedback from market research on innovation uh, in our group has decided that it's very important. Uh, and that really means um, prior to just innovating, it would be great if you can get access somehow to what people want, or what the consumers want, what industry wants. Um, and you also then have to have an idea, and I, I guess, and our group concluded, uh, you need to have different approaches if you want to innovate for businesses, for an industry or you want to innovate for consumers. It's a different path, different approach. Sales. So we had a, a, a sales on internet, but we just addressed sales in general. Um, build awareness. Yes, if you have an innovation, you need to build awareness. How do you, how do you let people know of your innovation? You don't want to end up a solution looking for a problem. You want to let people know that you have something innovative. So you build awareness, and we've concluded that it's important to use modern tools, modern communication tools today. That's Twitter and uh, uh, Facebook or whatever. Five years, ten years from now, it's going to be something different. Start small. I like this one. This is basically what uh, Brent was saying today. Uh, start small. Uh, focus on immediate result immediate use, immediate sustainability. Um, invest by giving away innovation for free. And for us who deal with IT, with the software development, that's basically saying go open source. If you, if you don't have market, if you can't sell licenses, and you think you believe your product is good and you expect that five years from now, or maybe there will be a market, just go open source, let it go there, let it sit there and then focus, uh, get your business model uh, transformed into uh, revenue through consultancy, for example, or uh, academia. Involve consumers in innovation process and product development, and this is also pretty obvious. I think it's very common in, uh, in IT with uh, beta releases, uh, with both closed beta and open beta. We frequently use it, but the question is how do you apply this into, uh, uh, I don't know, military industry? or, or um, um, different kind of industries. Do, how do you have consumers really participate in product design and development? How do you spread this across before it hits the market? Um, and the third subject, um, sustainability. We, um, we listed a few things. There was quite a discussion here. First, we wanted to get an idea of what is really sustainability. Um, is, is it possible to uh, have uh, uh, sustainability, long-term stability, put in direct connection with innovation, which is, you know, stirring things up, looking into a little bit more uh, uh, unstructured. So, yeah, continuous uh, improvement of an innovation. So we have one innovation, and in order to make it long-term sustainable, we continue to improve that single innovation. That's one way to look at it. Uh, battle competition, obviously. Uh, 
I don't know how you do that in terms of innovation, because you can't really just buy creativity, you can uh, entice it or, um, I'm not sure, maybe Brent will give us a little bit more idea later in the, in the, in the panel, competition and innovation, I have really no idea there. Uh, diversify and spread across industries. This is something we already mentioned, and I like the example with uh, uh, squid, green jeans, and application in the military industry with landmines. So that's where you have you start with one industry, and you they're totally unaware of its uh, huge potential in a totally separate industry. So this is one certainly one way to make uh, innovation sustainable. Uh, grow, grow target market, but uh, keep focus. Uh, basically, we were discussing Facebook here and um, um, what's innovative about it uh, and what made it successful. So the focus over there was always young people um, uh, having the need to communicate and it just spread across the markets. So the, so the focus was always clear. Uh, and this is, this is the idea, grow target market, but keep that focus. Um, keep inventing uh, sub-products, so use one big invention or innovation as a, a spin-off or a platform to uh, uh, grow with innovative sub-products individually or jointly with, with that big innovation. And uh, don't cave into your own innovation fortress. I was a little bit poetic here, uh, although the person said something totally different. I, I don't know why I put it this way. But uh, it's, yeah, uh, keep uh, eyes open. Uh, we see companies really become monsters in a few years, like. Uh, Apple or Facebook or Google, and they're basically run by a group of teenagers. And yeah, they they should really not think that uh, with the, the, the kind of effort they're involving now, they should that they will uh, exist in the same way for 20, 30 years. It's going to be a lot more difficult. This is it. Thank you. Then, um, okay, so we have Alexandra. Um, she's gonna present a summary of the of Beyond the Idea um, theme. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is our startup group presentation. We are looking to find the answer for these four questions. Uh, what is more important for a startup, the idea or the team? How to get funding? How do you seek for support when you have a good idea? And uh, four questions, entrepreneurship vs. management uh, as a discipline. Uh, first of all, we were discussing what is most important for a startup and we make a quite short execution where we find out that uh, for the real business we need management. Uh, it's uh, one of uh, the answers of our group members. Uh, second, business plan, structure, uh, corporate cu cultural lack of experience, heroes, role model entrepreneur, timing, environment, and timely execution. The real answer of the question what is more important for a startup, the idea or the team, we are, uh, we are discussing about the model of business resource where we put uh, together uh, the, the four uh, most important resources for the business. That is, uh, on the first place, we find out that for a good startup business, we need people. Normally, it's number one. Uh, then, the second, people who have uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, the third place, uh, only people who have uh, good knowledge and are well motivated can uh, find uh, money for a very successful startup uh, project. Uh, the next uh, question was where, where people can find money. It's a very interesting question. Uh, some of the thoughts were that money, for the money you need to have uh, angels. Uh, the very uh, strong uh, way how to find money to raise is to looking for the money in your family. Uh, find money uh, uh, from your friends and fools. It's a, it's a little bit of a joke. 
uh, it's very, uh, we all state that it, it is very difficult to find money in this region. You should have um, uh, good relations with the banks, with the donors, and etc. But uh, we are, we were very sure that uh, from foreign investors, uh, it is the real place, uh, the real place how to raise money for a successful startup business. Uh, also, uh, the ability to sell the idea from the IT sector to sell an idea, it means uh, to have a, a quite good idea that you can promote it on the internet and uh, find uh, it's, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, mentioned by the professor Suala Stankovic. Uh, she's not here. No. Uh, also, customer traction, uh, some revenue, and uh, to have a sk selling skills because in this region of Serbia and the Balkan, there is a thought that uh, there is a reach of knowledge uh, for these selling skills. Uh, it is very important to have uh, training for how to sell your product because, because uh, there is a lack of these trainings in the Balkan not like in America. Uh, we were talking about entrepreneurial culture and uh, we were find out uh, what, is, what are the, the, the keys for the entrepreneurial culture and we find here uh, that the motivation uh, 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 that is good for uh, entrepreneurial culture, culture to have role models Global, uh, to follow the global role models, uh, to motivate. Uh, motivation has limits. Uh, entrepreneurship should be taught and missing first-hand experience at school. Uh, schools with education, uh, how, how it is important to be educated in school and take out uh, the responsibilities. Uh, BS education that is not formal like you were uh, catching from other uh, non-formal uh, lectures. Uh, what about motivation? Uh, our team uh, is find out that uh, uh, we will be motivated if we are looking for glory, for money, uh, to to prepare a good product, uh, education and training on how to motivate people and to have fun and also a pleasure for uh, doing the business. Uh, we have in a group uh, our guest from Sweden and uh, in the, uh, answer, she answered the question what is, uh, how is the situation in Sweden uh, because uh, as she mentioned, Sweden is a good uh, high-tech developed uh, country and she, she is answering that uh, the right key is uh, because of the connection between industry, public sector and academia. Any question? Do you understand? Thank you, Alexandra. So, Robert, uh, no. go, go set. Somebody else? All right. What's your name? Dragana. I'll drag for now. Hello, everyone. My name is Dragana, and um, uh, our group uh, was discussing uh, two separate issues. Uh, the first issue that we were discussing, the question actually was how to create a startup ecosystem, and the second one was a startup survival guide. So, uh, I would like to address the first issue. Um, uh, now, the, the question was how to create a startup ecosystem. And of course, I think that we first have to answer this, what is the ecosystem? And um, when we talk about startup ecosystems, we talk about something that is very similar, similar to a natural ecosystem. It's an environment where startups and entrepreneurs are uh, um, motivated to, uh, where, where people are motivated to become entrepreneurs. 
um, where entrepreneurship is something that becomes desirable, where people um, see success stories and they want to uh, fund startups and uh, become entrepreneurs. And um, why I, I, I think that this question was not because Serbia still doesn't have a startup ecosystem, and that is something that um, it's a job of all of us to, to build it. So the first thing that we think is very important for the ecosystem is the education. It's the formal education system because we know that other startup ecosystems in the world are built around large campuses, around the very uh, high quality education universities, where people can uh, come together, that they can live together, work together, and that they can simply share their knowledge. The other thing, education is something that uh, makes this entrepreneurial mindset so that um, the, the things about entrepreneurship should be more um, uh, visible and more uh, spoken about during our, our formal education. And um, the, the third thing is the support that you get from the um, uh, formal institutions of education. The second thing that we think is important is the community. And the community is a place where um, startups and entrepreneurs share the knowledge among them so that they are not keeping it for themselves and they are not aggressively competitive where they can um, be ready and open to communicate among each other. Um, the third thing is the government. And the government, um, well, one uh, important element is the support that we can get through some forms of public-private partnership or uh, funds. But the second thing is that the government should uh, make some stimulated measures for the entrepreneurs to um, uh, work more smoothly and more easily, and of course to simplify the rules and regulations and the legislation. Um, and the, the, the last thing that we think is, is very important and that's um, quite uh, connected to the mindset is this acceptance and tolerance of failure in society. Because we believe that, that living in Serbia, you're not living uh, in a place where your failure is something accepted, where you really feel if you fail, then that's all right, that you can start again. So here you are condemned for your failure. So acceptance of failure and um, tolerance of failure is something that will uh, probably um, uh, get rid of a, a, a lot of fear and bring a lot of relief to entrepreneurs here. So uh, this was the, the, first, um, the first question. Um, the second issue that we were talking about was startup survival guide. And because this is such a large, uh, large topic, we had many different things that we talked about. But here we were, um, we focused on how to identify opportunities, or actually how to see our problems, and how to face our problems and find opportunities in them. And um, of course, if we have uh, a product, a product should solve a problem. And if all the big problems that are obvious in the world are already solved, then the biggest uh, issue for the startup is how to find a problem or an opportunity that is not that obvious, but that people would um, really like to have it fixed. That to find some pain that's not very obvious. And then, of course, if you find such a pain and you find such a problem, then you make a product which uh, we should have this usage and the functionalities that are immediately visible and that they're very easy to use because uh, if you have a not, not so much obvious problem, people will not be inclined to use your product. So the moment they start using it, they should, they should be able to feel that this pro uh, pro uh, product is solving the problem. Um, of course, the third uh, step would be identifying the target audience. Well, not identifying, but uh, trying to communicate with the target audience in, in uh, order to see if there really is uh, a need for this product. So it's actually creating a minimum viable product and um, uh, building this um, development, uh, doing this customer development. And because um, we can find out during this um, testing phase and validating our idea, uh, Ideas that this is not a problem that anybody wants solved, and that this idea should be changed. The very important thing is that the team should be very flexible and very ready to um, let go of the first idea, to say, okay, this, this is my brainchild, but this might not be the best thing in the world, and this might not be profitable, we should change it. Um, so I think that, that that is that.
stopped our unconference session. Now we are going to have a break, 15 minutes break. So please, we must know how many of you are going to stay tonight for dinner. Everybody who would like to stay for dinner, sign up with our help desk. So put your name there and we know how many of us is going to be there. After the break, we are going to continue with a less unconference way. We will get into the structured way a little bit again. But we will have fun and discussion, very interesting one. So let's have a break right now. Thank you.